Alright guys, so today we're going to be solving problem 24, which is the lexographic permutations. A permutation is an ordered arrangement of objects. For example, 3, 1, 2, 4 is, is one possible permutation of the digits 1, 2, 3, and 4. If all the permutations are listed numerically or alphabetically, we call it lexographic order. The lexographic permutations of 0, 1, and 2 are, and it gives us the possible permutations for that. What is the 1 million lexographic permutations of the digits 0? through 9. So let's go ahead and solve this. Um, so we have to pretty much um, write an algorithm to find the next permutation and then we have to write one to go ahead and generate the numbers and the best way to solve this problem or to store the values is to use either a string you can use um, string builder or string buffer but this one I'll be using arrays all right so go ahead and create a class and let me just go back here i'm lazy right now i'm going to copy this and just paste it here since i don't want to type uh, control v all right and i'm going to change this to capital p all right so we have a class java class here okay so the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and fill up our array. So we need a method for that. It's going to be private static int array. Call this one init. It's going to take uh, int array. You know what? Let's uh, let it take a range. So do inclusive range. All right, then we can go ahead and create an array. So we're going to bear array, going to equal to new uh, int array, and we're going to do inclusive plus one. And then we can just generate a for loop. Bear uh, so index equals to zero, index in the array dot length index plus plus then we need to fill the array so array dot index is gonna equal the index and then we can return the array all right so that's the first part this is just to go ahead and uh, fill the array with the values and we return we return that so next we have to pretty much create the method to do the swaps okay so uh, swap it's going to take in the array and then to uh, the number the indexes I want to swap at uh, make this a and b And this is pretty easy. So we create a temp variable. It's gonna say temp. It's gonna to equal to array. And we pass an A here. And A is gonna to equal to B. And B is gonna equal to temp. I mean, this is something that everybody should know how to do by now all right so now that we have that we're done with the swap so now we have to go ahead and generate the next permutation we're going to be of type boolean we we'll call this next permutation Gonna take in the array. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the right values. So uh, we need to get right value. You know what? Let's get the left value. All right, so let's say that we're at the first number, which is zero. Let's say we're at the base case, right? So for us to get uh, 
the to swap right what we need to do is we need to find the number that is less than this number here so we can swap it to get 0 to 1 right so what we're going to do is we need to find that index and then we need to find the index next to the other one so we can create we can swap it so what we need to do is first we need to get all of the elements this is going to be the array dot length right and then we need a value to get the index so this is going to be the left uh, index it's going to equal to zero for now all right so we're going to say that for uh, left index uh, equal to the elements minus one right and then we do the left index is greater or equal to zero left index uh, minus minus All right so we're going to say that if right the array with the left index subscript is less than the right so do left plus one and let's change this to two all right because the thing is that we want to check the inner one so we want to check this one with this one so if we are at um, if we are at just the minus length then we're going to be here at this part right here for this part right here but we need to be here okay so hopefully you guys can follow what, along what I'm saying. And if we find that, we can just go ahead and break. All right, the thing is this. So we're looking at the number that is closest to the biggest one, right? Um, so this one, so one and this is this. So to get the biggest number, we have to swap this two. However, let's say that we're at here, at the biggest number, at zero, at uh, two, one, zero, which is the biggest permutation for zero, one, two then there's not going to be no left big number so eventually the left index is going to equal to negative one for it to be able to exit this loop here and since we're keeping track of the left index we can say that that if the um integer uh, compared to and then we just pass the uh, left index and it does equal to negative one so it becomes that then we can go ahead and return false so this is where we find the last permutation for this. So go ahead and return false. All right. So now that we've known that, we found the value. So we need to go ahead and swap with this one. We found that the value that we want to swap here is going to be one here. So now we want to go ahead and swap here. So what we need to do is find the swap index. We're going to say swap index going to equal to the elements right minus one next what we want to do is going to just create a for loop and this part is going to be empty and they're going to say that if the array, uh, array and the left index right is greater than the array with the um, swap index then we're going to go ahead and do a swap index minus minus all right so this is where we want to want to find so if so we're currently here right so is one greater than two no so the swap index is going to be at the at the value two so now we can swap two and one to get zero to one which is going to be the next permutation so now we go down here and we can uh, perform the swap so I'm going to say swap and then Gonna take the array, right? And we're gonna wanna swap the left index with the swap that we find, All right? So that's the first part. So now that we found this, however, let's say that you are at the value. Um, if you're at this value, so the next value we get is two one, right? So we start here. So we go, okay, is 
uh, one is one greater than two. No, it's not. So is zero greater than, than two? Yes, it is. So we swap. So this is going to end up to be this. So it's going to be zero, uh, two, zero, one. But two, zero, one is not the big next permutation, right? So what we have to do is we have to go ahead and also swap these values to get the final result as this, as one, zero, two. So we need, we need another for loop to go ahead and do the swap. So the next permutation from this one is going to be this one and not this. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create another uh, loop that was going to check that. So what we're going to do is create two variables. We're going to say var x is going to equal to uh, left index plus one. And then var z is going to equal to uh, elements minus one. So we want to do the swap, okay? So we're gonna say while uh, z is greater than x, they wanna go ahead and perform the swaps. So we're gonna say uh, swap, and then we're gonna pass in the array, and then we're gonna pass in z, and then we're gonna pass x, all right? Then we're gonna go ahead and increment so since z is the bigger one, we have to uh, decrement. So we're going to say that z minus minus and x plus plus, all right? So what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and just print out all the possible permutations. So I'm going to use the shortcut here and I'm going to use the arrays class and then use the two string method and pass in the array, all right? So we can print out the array. And if this is done, we can go ahead and return true. So that means it has the next permutation. So now that we've done that, all we need to do is pretty much just write another method that's going to go ahead and generate the permutations for us. All right. Hmm. Okay. So now you just go ahead and create another method. And this is going to be a string because we want to return the string representation of the answer. Call this one million permutation. And this is going to take in the limit and the interray. Call this array. All right, so all we need to do is keep a counter. So we're going to say counter is going to equal to zero. Right? And we're going to say, wow next permutation pass in the array I'm gonna say if uh, let's can do this you can say plus plus counter equal equal to the limit then we're gonna go ahead here and break okay so if we break here then we want to go ahead and get the string representation of the answer. So we're going to say str is going to equal to arrays dot two string pass in the array. All right. However, when we print this out, you're going to see that uh, the string is going to. Um, so I'm going to go here and return um, str. All right. Because now that we have this, we can just go ahead and uh, create main. So we're going to do public static void main. All right. So all you have to do is generate the array. So say there array is going to equal to uh, init. And we're going to pass in nine. So we need the nine values. And then next we're going to do a uh, SRT here. And then we're going to do the 1 million permutation, passing the limit. So we're going to go through 9999. Nine, nine, nine. All right. The reason is because when the array, when we pass in the array for the first time, the 0, 1, 2, 3, the 9, right, that's not going to be added. So what's, what's going to do is going to generate the next permutation right there and then. We're going to count that. We're not going to count the first one. So we have to go 99999. Nine, 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 all right. And then we need to go ahead and pass in the array. So how many nines do we have here? Three nines. Okay. So let's go ahead and print this out. 
And what it's going to do is pretty much going to print all of the permutations and then finally it's going to print out the last answer. And I'm doing this on purpose. So obviously this is going to be the answer here. However, you can see that even though we're converting that to two string, it's still adding all of this extra stuff here. So what I want to do is we want to take, out, take this off. And what we can do is we can use the replace all method here. So we're going to say here, we're going to say dot replace all. All right. So what we want to do is do this, go that, that, and then bracket, pipe it, and then we're going to do again and pipe. And then we want to uh, pipe it. And then remove all these spaces. My bad. And we want to replace this with empties. I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? All right. Uh, let me go here. All right, let me just shrink this a little bit. Okay. So this is what it should look like. All right, so what we want to do is we want to replace all of the, um, we want to remove all of the commas here, the spaces and the um, brackets as well. All right, so this is how you would do it. So now we can go ahead and run this again, and then the final answer should just be a regular string. All right, and there you go. And this should be the solution for the final answer. All right, guys, this will be it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good night. Bye-bye.